Oh, hello there. What am I doing? Uh, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm just, I'm just journaling, writing down some of my thoughts, some of my feelings, things that I've been thinking about, and, you know, the one thing that's really been on my mind that I've had to journal for a while, and that is... The fact that Gabriela Montez is the true villain of the HSM trilogy. How's that for an intro? <laughs> All right. So, let me get into this. This is a, a controversial video. I understand that. But I've been thinking about this for a while. I've done some research. I've contacted sources who will remain unnamed. I've... I've I've dug deep. I've thought about this for a while. This is what my brain thinks about, okay? This is what my brain constantly is in distress, worrying about and thinking about while I'm sleeping, while I'm eating, while I'm showering, while I'm breathing. 24-7, I think about Gabriela Montez. I didn't really... <laughs> that didn't really sound... I think about her being... I do think about her. I think about her being the villain. Okay? Okay? She's the true villain. Forget about this Sharpay nonsense. She's not the real... She's the victim of the trilogy. Let's, let's break this down movie by movie. Movie number one, the original High School Musical. It starts off so sweet, so innocent. She's just a little nerdy girl who likes to read books and, and she's good at math. And she's so unassuming. She doesn't want to be the center of attention. And yeah, maybe Sharpay can be a little bit overbearing. Maybe she can be a little bit too much sometimes. But at the end of the day, if we look at the facts, Gabriela Montez shows up after the new year and completely changes everyone's life, and some not for the better, if we think about it. Maybe Taylor you could consider for the better. We'll get to her in a minute. But she starts dating Troy. Well, she I don't know if they officially start dating. Like, when she first gets there, it's kind of unclear when they officially start dating, but... She gets together with Troy. And from that moment on, everything is changed. She shakes up the status quo. There's even a freaking song about it. She shakes up the status quo. Now Troy wants to sing? Troy wants to sing? What? He's a basketball player. He can't have more than one hobby? Are you kidding me? He can't, he can't play basketball and sing at the same time. What are you talking about? Zeke wants to bake? What? 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 He wants to bake creme brulee? The stoner kids want to wanna hang out with the jocks? Martha wants to pop and lock and jam and break? Like, what are we talking about here? She completely just blows up the status quo of East High. And not only does she do that, not only does she do that, she changes and ruins the musical. Sharpay and Ryan are, they're, they're, they're the duo at East High. They are in every musical as the leads in everything. No matter what it is, they're, they're there. They are the two that are the top priority and so when Gabriella gets there oh she 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 didn't even she didn't even make the audition call Miss Darbus was saying is there anybody else she said multiple different times is there anybody else and no no word from Gabriella or Troy and then oh, all of a sudden she comes in a little bit late and then then Miss Darbus does the right thing Miss Darvis does the right thing. She says, nope, it's over. I called multiple times. You didn't answer. It's done. Auditions are over. So then she goes up. She helps Kelsey 
they're talking, they're doing small talk, and then they start singing the song the way that Kelsey wrote it, even though the way that Sharpay and Ryan sing it is perfectly fine for the musical. So, they sing it, and then Miss Darbus comes back, and she should have been, she should have had to go to classes, she's a teacher, she gotta go to class, why is she hanging around, waiting? What's she doing? She, then she gives special treatment to Gabriella, gives them a callback, her and Troy, even though they didn't officially sing for auditions, and yet they still get a, a callback. So right there, she's already villainous by getting special treatment. And then we move on. We go, Sharpay's just trying to save her show. Sharpay is just trying to sh save the show. So she she thinks that maybe if we put all their, their, their both of their events, the, the state championship game and the uh, decathlon, if we put those on the same day at the same time, then maybe they won't be able to make the show, which is a reasonable thought. I mean, this is your supposed to be your deal. And then these outsiders are coming into the drama club trying to take over? What are we talking about here? So then that doesn't work. So Sharpay decides to convince Miss Darbus to move the audition time, the callback time, to where it lines up and then everything comes together. So now we've got one single day where you've got the callbacks, you've got the decathlon, and you've got the state championship game all on the same day at the same exact time. And in in it all, Gabriella still comes out the hero. She somehow wins the decathlon because she's just the smartest person to ever live. She's the next Einstein, I guess. And then Troy wins the championship because all he, his superpower is singing, so he wins the championship. And somehow, somehow... Even after that tremendous performance of Bob to the Top. I mean, it doesn't get much better than Bob to the Top. I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? So, you get that tremendous performance of Bob to the Top that should have done everything but guarantee that Sharpay and Ryan were going to get the leads of this musical. Then, out of nowhere, even late again, I do want to add, they're late again... They come down, they bring the whole crowd, and just because there's a crowd now that Miss Darbus is like, okay, go ahead, go do it. And then they get on stage. They get on stage. And she's she's nervous. She's she's stage she's got stage fright and she she can't handle herself, but then Troy comes in as the savior and he calms her down and just look at me and, and write at me, everything like that. And then they sing and they get uh, presumably they get the the leads. We never find out officially if they ever get the lead because they go back to the gym and it, it's over then. So that's just movie number one. And we're just getting started on Gabrielle. Movie number one is really kind of like the, the simmering point. Like there, There's nothing really major just there. Movie two and movie three are where my case will be made. So movie number two. It's summertime, everybody's so excited. You know how you felt when you were in school, maybe you're still in school, and it gets to summertime, and you're like, yes, no more school, I don't have to wake up so early, I don't have to go to these stupid classes and learn these stupid things that I'm never going to have to need in regular life. True fact. So, I'm just so excited to be out of school for the summer and that's how Gabriella and Troy were thinking and Gabriella even says that she just wants to have a summer where she's hanging with her friends and hanging with her boyfriend and having a good summer still acting like a kid acting like a kid they're juniors going to be seniors so we get through the summer we're going they get the jobs at Lava Springs Sharpay by the way goes above and beyond and gets Troy a job at Lava Springs, one of the most prestigious clubs, golf clubs, country clubs, in the area. And maybe you could say, oh, her parents built it, her parents own it. Of course she's going to have special treatment on, the, on getting people jobs. Of course she's going to be like, no, she's worked for this. Sharpay has earned this opportunity, and she uses it to get Troy a job because she believes in Troy. She wants to see Troy take that next step. She wants to help him in his future. And so, Troy, being the hero that he is, goes and gets all of the other Wildcats jobs as well. 
including Gabriella, who just apparently appears to be a lifeguard. Did she go through the certification? Is she lifeguard certified? Does she know CPR? Apparently she doesn't, because she doesn't even have the audacity to jump in that water and save Sharpay. She has to have somebody else do it. So, Gabriella, we don't even know she's certified to be a lifeguard. And yet she becomes the new lifeguard. She's got the job. And then she's acting all crazy because she just wants to have some fun and take over the Lava Springs talent show. This is Sharpay's thing. And this two times in a row now that Sharpay has wanted to do something with the musical. And Gabriella has come in and completely stolen it. Out of nowhere. It's unbelievable. So Gabriella and Troy and all the Wildcats are rehearsing and we get some drama. And then... Midway through, we're already kind of seeing some tension between Gabrielle and Troy because Troy is, is moving up in the ranks of this Lava Springs job. He gets the job as the assistant golf pro. He's teaching people how to, teaching little kids how to swing the golf club. And he gets all this new stuff. He gets new clothes. He gets uh, new shoes and all this new stuff. And it's thanks to Sharpay because Sharpay is helping him with his career. He's helping him, she's helping him move up and help his future. Gabriella is still stuck in the past. And so when Troy is doing his little session, he's teach his teaching session where he's teaching the kids how to swing the golf club and Sharpay, this is a little you can there's a little gray area with Sharpay. What's she trying to do here? She trying to get in between Sharpay or uh, Gabrielle and Troy by getting a little bit intimate with him when she when he's sling, swinging the club and he's he's behind her teaching her how to do it all that kind of stuff so gabriella is watching from afar and this is where taylor comes in where she's a secret number two evil true villain of the trilogy probably just in this movie but i mean the first one she's kind of a villain too because she literally like teams up with chad to break these two up when they've literally known each other for like maybe a month at the most, maybe two months. So she, she teams up with Chad, who before that doesn't even have any history with Chad, that has no reason to talk to Chad. And now all of a sudden she wants to break up this relationship. So she, she, she's a whole, she's, she's a whole nother villain. She, she's a sub villain of the trilogy, but Gabrielle is the real villain because She's, she's standing there watching from afar and Taylor gets in her ear and she's like, he, he asked about the golf shoes. He asked Sharpay about the golf shoes and all that kind of stuff. He's got new golf shoes. I, and, and, and Gabrielle is like, he didn't ask me how I liked it. What are you talking about? He, if we're going by the way that it's edited, the way that the movie is edited, he gets the golf shoes and then pretty much immediately it cuts to him having his first training session where he's he's teaching and then that scene so if we're to believe that it's the next day or the next couple of days how would he have had time to tell you about his golf shoes and to and and to ask you how you what you think of them he, he's so he's busy he's trying to work and so she gets all upset she's she's already had this thing in her mind that she's like, Troy's a different person, Troy's, he's acting different, if this is who you really, this, this is the real Troy, it's good to know now, all that kind of stuff, but Troy's literally just trying to benefit his future, he's going with the Red Hawks to, to practice, because he's trying to, he's trying to get a scholarship, you know how expensive college is? He's trying to get a scholarship, a full ride, he's a 5'9 white boy, of course he's not going to get a full ride any other way, he's got to, he's got to get it, so he's going here. Chad and Zeke and Jason and all the boys, they're upset because Troy's changed. He's a different person. Same thing with Gabriella. And then and then we get through all of this, and then we get to the breakup scene. And Gabriella blames it on Sharpay. Not not blames the breakup on Sharpay, but she blames some of the things that led up to it on Sharpay. She has that whole confrontation with her by the pool and just attacks Sharpay. And then breaks up with Troy. Troy has literally no idea what's going on. He's so confused, which is not a new thing for Troy. He's literally confused in everything, every, all three movies. So Troy's confused. He has no idea what's going on. She takes the the T necklace and gives it to him, and breaks up with him, and then goes away. She, what? 
how is that not villainous behavior? How is that not evil behavior? Sharpay's trying to benefit Troy's future, and Sharp and Gabriella just wants to to be a kid again, and and not grow up and not focus on her future, which is the complete opposite of what she does in the third movie. We will get to that in a second. But so she gets through, she gets through, leaves, and then Troy's just he's Troy's going through it. He's 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 having a bad day. The the staff gets kicked out of doing the the musical thing so it's no longer a staff talent show or whatever and or staff participation and so that leads to um bet on it and he's angry he's in the sad boy era he's wearing all black he's doing everything so we get through all that troy finally admits that he's gonna or he finally agrees to sing with sharpay but he doesn't he technically doesn't because he changes uh, ryan changes the song but troy doesn't know that and it's a whole thing and then so Sharpay again gets destroyed. And one of the coldest things that's uh, happened in all three of these movies is Ryan changing the, sh the song without Sharpay knowing and then having her go out there like she's, she's gonna, she's gonna get ready to, to sing the song that she thinks she's singing. And then to be told that she didn't learn a new song. And then like, what? Like, it's just Sharpay just gets the worst end of it every single movie. So we get through the 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 um the song every day and all that kind of stuff and and Gabriella shows back up she's like the white knight she's the hero apparently because she shows up out of the blue with the necklace how did she get the necklace we don't know because i'm assuming that somehow Troy told Chad about what happened he gave Chad the necklace Chad then in turn gives the necklace to Taylor and Taylor gives the necklace back to to Gabriella. That's the only way that makes sense. So somehow Gabriella has the necklace. She comes back and she's the hero. And then we're all happy and we're all good. And we end and we sing every day and, and it's, it's all good. So it's, it's unbelievable. Number movie. Number two is, is the, the big thing that starts the Gabriella villain era. And then we get to number three. We get to the third movie. The first time it's not a Disney channel original movie. It's got a movie budget and you can tell. It's got a movie budget. I mean, we start with sweaty Troy right up in our faces. The first thing we ever see. I mean, you can tell this is a movie budget. So we get through and Gabriella starts off with um, the song. She's standing in the stands when Troy gets concussed, probably because he takes that hard foul and he lands back on his head. He probably gets concussed. He's not okay. And she stands up and all she does is Troy. And it, all of a sudden he's good now. Like he just needed her to, to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And now they're, now he's good. And now they go and they win the, the state championship back to back. And it's just, it, the third movie just blows my mind with the stuff that Gabriella does. She's such a, she's such a, uh, a hypocrite. And a, like, she contradicts herself so many times between the second and the third movie. So in the second movie, she's all about, I want to just stay a kid. I want to have this summer with you and all this kind of stuff. But then in the third movie, now that they're seniors and they got to look actually at their future, which Troy was trying to prepare for earlier, which is good. You want to be prepared before you actually go into your senior year. Gabrielle is just riding high on her um, academic ability. She doesn't really try. She's just super smart naturally, which those kind of people are annoying. That was not me, by the way. So she's got this freshman honors program at Stanford, one of the most prestigious academic schools in the country. Stanford is unbelievable for academics. And she's got this freshman honors program, which is a, a unbelievable opportunity. And she doesn't tell anybody except for Taylor and presumably her mom at some point. She doesn't tell Troy. Troy has to find out by Sharpay. What? What? So... And then she takes the, the freshman honors program, even though at the beginning of the movie, she... Like, Sharpay just wants to do the one-woman show. That's all she wants to do. She just, it's her senior year. She wants to go out on top. She knows that Juilliard is in her future. She wants to, she wants to do the one-woman show. Let her have the one-woman show. What's the big deal? So then, uh, we, we don't get the one-woman show. We get every, Kelsey signs everybody up without their permission and just, now they're now they have to do it so then they go and they argue like i can't do it i got zeke's got the the baking final and and jason's got to study for his his uh acts or whatever they are uh because he's dumb so he's got to study for those he's gonna be stuck in the library and taylor's got yearbook stuff and everybody's got stuff to do troy's got to work on the truck so then gabriella because oh she's she, she's gabriella so you got to listen to her 
So she says, she looks, she gives Troy a look, and then Troy says, fine, I'll do it. He didn't want to do it. You know that Troy didn't want to do it. So, but just because Gabriella said, I want to do it, I think it'd be fun. Now she's roped everybody, because of course, if, if Troy's doing it, then of course all the other people have to do it. I mean, why, why wouldn't they? they? They couldn't just say no. They don't have a mind of their own. So, so now that Troy said he's going to do the play, now everybody's involved. And Gabriella knew this. She knew that she was going to take this freshman honors program, or at least she had a good idea that she was going to take this freshman honors program. She may not have been 100% decided that she was going to do it, but she had a good idea, like, I'm probably going to take it. She, but if she wasn't, like, maybe she was 50-50 on it. And so she gets everybody roped into this that they didn't want to do. And now they've got this other uh, big project that they have to do, not only by their own personal stuff to benefit their future. And then she doesn't even finish it. She goes and she takes the freshman honors program and leaves Troy. She breaks up with Troy over the phone, over the phone. And she goes and she's in Stanford and she says she can't come back because she can't say goodbye more than once. She already said goodbye. I can't do it. I don't think I can do it again. What? Don't you think you're going to have to say goodbye when you're an adult? Are you not going to be able to handle that? You can't say goodbye more than one time? You're just going to run away from your problems, Gabriella? What are we doing here? So she breaks Troy's heart a second time in the last six months, maybe nine months, depending on when it, when this happens and stuff. So Troy's heart's broken. Chad tries to console him by telling him he can go sleep with other women in college, which is, I mean, it's whatever. So, so Gabriella has already roped everybody into the play that they didn't want to do in the first place. She then goes through with it and then still accepts the freshman honors program in Stanford leaves for Stanford after telling Troy that the plan was she was going to leave come back for the play come back for the prom and come back for graduation three different times she was going to come back it's only Stanford to New Mexico it's not that far it's a thousand whatever they say in the song it's a thousand twenty three hundred mile whatever it is I forget the exact number it's whatever the thousand miles it is it's not that far so then she she says she breaks up with him she she can't do goodbyes more than once and so and she sings gotta go my own way she sings gotta go my way before she breaks up with troy but she's gotta go she she knew she she sings gotta go my own way and she breaks up with troy over the phone which is just unbelievable and then and she she says i love you wildcat like what just say his name why you gotta say wildcat so we got that whole situation and then and then she comes back and she's the hero she comes, she comes back, she's the hero, because she, Troy goes there, goes to Stanford on that janky truck that there's no, absolutely no way made it on the highway more than 35 miles an hour, but if it, if it would have went more, it would have blown up. There is no way that janky truck made it on the highway all the way to Stanford, California, so I, that's a whole nother thing, but Troy goes there, he, they have their Can I Have This Dance remix song, uh, prom dance thing. And then they drive all the way back, which is, again, unbelievable because that truck was smoking in the parking lot or in the when he parked it. There's no way that it was going to get up to 60, 75 miles an hour on the highway again a second time. You, you cannot believe, make me believe that. So somehow they make it back in time. And then they're the heroes. Then they're the heroes. They make it back. They save the show. They save the show even though it was going fine. If, if freaking Rocket Man would have just been ready on time, Gab, uh, Sharpay wouldn't have had to to improvise and ha wouldn't have had to be vamping for so long uh and then rocket man rocket man's a whole nother thing that we can get into in another video but gabriella and troy are the heroes and gabriella is celebrated everybody's so happy you're back you're back and then she stays for graduation so she she contradicts herself again she wreath she she says she wasn't going to come back but because troy said you you gotta you changed so many lives you you, you didn't you didn't change when you got there you changed everybody whatever he says when they're walking after the can i have this dance scene and so so then that makes her rethink everything apparently just because one guy said this you don't have to you don't have to base your entire life decisions on the thoughts of one guy he's one guy that you met in high school and kind of like yes he's super attractive and he's probably a good kisser i don't know i've never kissed zach efron before so he's probably a good kisser i have no idea but you, you're basing all your life decisions on the thoughts of this one guy. You're going to meet other guys. Taylor says it. There's going to be other people. There's going to be other guys. There may even be other women. I don't know. Depends what you're into. It doesn't matter. So 
she she's basing all these decisions on the thoughts of Troy. And then she comes back. They do the they finish the senior year play. She stays for graduation. They have a good time. They sing. Then they they break the fourth wall and they the curtains come down and yay high school music three it's over. So after all of that, people come out of it thinking Gabriella is the the greatest. She's the hero. She's awesome. Sharpay is the villain. Sharpay in each movie gets unbelievably screwed. Every single time, she is the true victim of the three movies. She is not the true villain. Yes, she has poor character development. It doesn't continue through each movie. It's not a consistent going up of a character arc. It's kind of just a flat line. Well, actually, no, it's not a flat line. It's kind of like a roller coaster because you start at the villainous stuff. And then it, it starts to get a little bit better as she goes towards the end of the movie. Then at the beginning of the next movie, it's back down here at the bottom. And then it goes up again in the second movie. And then back down to start the third movie. It's just a little bit of a roller coaster for Sharpay. And they didn't need to do that. They could have had another person be the villainous character in, in the second and third movie. Maybe not the second movie because the second movie was based around Lava Springs. And that's Sharpay's parents' place. Like, whatever. The third movie definitely didn't need Sharpay to be the villain. You just didn't need it. You, you just didn't need it. Gar Gabriella was already the villain. She was perfectly primed and ready for to be the villain of that third movie. But because she's the star, she's on the cover, she's the, the face of High School Musical other than Troy, she can't be the villain. It's got to be Sharpay again. I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Sharpay gets screwed in the first movie by losing out her spot as the number one and Ryan's spot by these outsiders. And then number two, she's just trying to have a normal vacation, normal summer at Lava Springs, sitting in the sun, tanning, doing yoga, whatever she wants to do, and then do the, the staff musical talent show thing. And then all, all these wildcats come and ruin her, her summer. And then in the third movie, she's just trying to get ready for Juilliard, having this one-woman show, and it's ruined again by guess who? The same wildcats. It's unbelievable. It's almost like Gabrielle is the villain of High School Musical. Of all three. But nobody seems to want to talk about it until today. I'm the one who's man enough to talk about it. Who's man enough to bring it up and to speak it and bring it into the light. Because Gabriella is a hypocrite. She's contradicting herself constantly. She's a horrible girlfriend to Troy most of the time. And and she she just she's evil. She's just, she's an evil person. She's an evil, evil, evil person who is the villain of all three movies and nobody wants to talk about it because it's just Sharpay. It's just the, that's just the, she's the, she's the pretty blonde girl. Of course, she's going to be the villain. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying, but I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm just speaking my truth. So that, that is going <laughs> to, this video is crazy. Oh man. Okay. So. I, I've said my piece. I've said what I had to say. What do you guys think in the comments? Do you agree with me? Have I made some right points? And this isn't even everything that I've had to say. I just kind of wanted to say the main things, the, the main topics. There's, there's other things that I could bring up that I'm not really thinking of right now. There's other things that uh, I could go on and elaborate with on how uh, Gabrielle is a villain. There's other things there that I just didn't talk about because they either weren't like major, major points or they were just things that I didn't feel like needed to be covered. I cover, I feel like I covered all of the important pieces of each movie that would make Gabriella seem like the villain. So if you agreed with me, let me know down below in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of video. It's, it's very, very different uh, than... A normal video on the channel, I guess. It's just me yelling at the camera, yelling by myself uh, for a half hour. So let me know if you enjoyed this video. I've got another video in my head that I really have been thinking about for a couple years now, actually. Uh, thinking about wanting to try to do. Uh, and I, I may finally have the time and the ability to actually make it a reality and actually do this other video. I think it could be fun. It's going to be probably along the same lines of this video where I'm just yelling at you guys for a half hour. Uh, so be on the lookout for that in the future. Uh, and then also be on the lookout for just other reaction videos, Outer Banks, uh, whatever else may pop up 
and uh, be on the lookout for live streams as well here on the channel. I always update the community tab with the, the date, the time, all that kind of stuff for when we're going to go live. I know we haven't been live for a few months now, but it's just been kind of busy with all the other stuff on my other channels and stuff. So uh, I've been kind of swamped with that stuff. So I, I will go live again. Don't worry on the channel. We're just kind of trying to figure everything out, trying to get a right schedule going. But keep an eye on the community tab for updates on that. And yeah, let me know what you think of this video. Did you enjoy it? Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? Do you think that Sharpay truly is the villain of the three movies? Or maybe you think that somebody else is. I mentioned Taylor earlier. Do you think maybe Taylor is the true villain of it? Or maybe you think Chad is the true villain? Because Chad does enough bad stuff in these three movies to make you think that he's the true villain. So, I mean, there's, there's a bunch. I just chose Gabriella because she's the easy target to pick for being the true villain. Um... And she has some good points that back it up to make you think that she actually is. So, uh, uh, and I don't want this to come off as I'm a, I'm a hater. No, I, I love these three movies. If you know me and you know this channel, you know that I love the three movies uh, so much. And I'm just, I just wanted to, to bring you guys another perspective. Maybe you haven't thought about that before. Maybe you haven't thought. Maybe you always just thought, um, yeah, of course, Sharpay is the villain of the movie. That's just what it is. But there's other things to think about. There's other, now that we're older, now that we're grown-ups, most of us, <laughs> um, we can, we have different perspectives. We have different life experiences, different things that we think about that when you look at these movies through the grown-up eyes, instead of as a child, when we watched these originally, you think about things differently. Some things you see when you're a child, you don't really think about, but when you're older, how did that doesn't, that doesn't really work too much. How did she get that necklace? Doesn't really make sense. She gave it to Troy and they never had any other interaction before she shows back up to sing the song. So stuff like that, when you think about it again, when you watch it, when you're older changes your perspective. So I'm just, I'm just throwing out another perspective for you guys. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. That's the good thing about this world that we live in. We can be right, we can be wrong. Opinions are opinions. If you agree with mine, awesome. If you don't, awesome. We can have those arguments in the comments. We can have those conversations in the comments. I would love to do that. And maybe we pick this back up on a live stream and we actually have that instant interaction with each other and we, we go back and forth. We toss out things. That, that's possible. Maybe we have a debate. I don't know. That'd be awesome. But let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below. Thank you so much. Stop by and watching. I'm very tired now. I got to go take a nap because I expelled a lot of energy trying to get my point across. <laughs> I'm very tired now. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.